Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Light of the World Ministries. In John 8, 12, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. This Bible study is going to be called Treasures in Heaven. This is a new study. And uh, when I was living in Tennessee, Knoxville, there was a a Pentecostal charismatic type church that I attended briefly and uh, the pastor did a sermon on treasures in heaven about eh, probably oh I don't know 25 some odd years ago I kind of liked it and I thought about it and I liked and I liked it and uh, I was in a truck stop eating breakfast and uh, a lot of places where they had truck stops had uh, cassettes can you believe that cassettes that goes back a couple years huh hey let's bring back eight tracks right and uh they would have sermons you know free sermons just grab a tape throw it in the truck listen to it uh and then when you get to the next truck stop that has free sermons you just take another one from them and give you know put the other one uh there i was partners with a guy that used to do he used to make uh cassette tapes and then deliver them to the truck stops but uh sadly we had a falling away because he was uh thought i was a heretic because i didn't believe in the pre-trib rapture boy i'll tell you it, it's really sad huh but that's the way it goes all right so this is a new bible study we're going to go and read first Matthew 19. Now we're going to read the all uh, the other possibly it's the same story. I believe it is in book of Luke and Mark book Mark and the book of Mark. We're going to look at Matthew, Luke and Mark. So, somebody comes up to Jesus and they're going to talk to him. And it says uh Matthew 19 and verse 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, so somebody came and said to Jesus, Good master, um, and that word master there, believe it or not, sometimes uh, they translate that as rabbi. Yeah, same word, rabbi, but he's, he's calling a master. He says, Good master, what good thing? shall I do? Wow. Uh, wait a minute. He, he's asking, what shall I do? What good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Hmm. Now, what did Paul have to say about, you know, this guy saying, hey, what can I do to earn eternal life? But what does Paul say about that? Ephesians 2.8, Paul writes, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God. You know, uh, it, it's a gift and grace and being saved through faith. There's nothing we can do, you know, to go to God and say hey you got to you got to let me in and have eternal life because I donated $100 to the United Negro College Fund you know for by grace are ye saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of God you don't earn a gift of God okay um Romans 6:23 Boy, this is a famous verse. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. In Ephesians 2 and verse 8 and 9, we read, For by grace are ye saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God not of works, lest any man 
should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in them. Now, if you read James chapter 2, you will find that uh, James said that, uh, basically paraphrasing, he's saying that good works follow faith. Good works are proof of your faith. Because faith will, uh, good works will always follow faith. Always. James chapter 2, I think, is one of the most important chapters in the Bible, my opinion. I call James the book of daily living, because boy, it is. All right, so, so let's go back to Matthew 19, and we'll start in verse 16 again. And behold, one came and said unto him, Somebody came and said to Jesus, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? Hey, what can I do that I can earn eternal life is my take on it. And he, Jesus, said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses will tell you that this means uh, see, Jesus is telling this guy, uh, wait, why are you calling me good? Only God is good. And they'll tell you that Jesus is telling him not to call him good because he's not God. But I think there's more to a lot. No, there's more to it than that. A lot more. I think he's asking him. Are you acknowledging that I'm God in the flesh? 1 Timothy 3.16 Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one that is God. Jesus said, I and the Father are one. And the Jews were going to stone him for saying that he was God. Oh yeah. In 1 Timothy 3.16, I love this verse and without controversy so this is not even supposed to be controversial unless you're a heretic and without controversy great is the mystery of godliness god was manifest in the flesh did you know that god was made in the flesh yeah god was manifest in the flesh justified in the spirit seen of angels preached unto the Gentiles, believed on in the world, and received up into glory. Oh, yeah. All right, let's go to John 10. I'm laying the groundwork here, so please bear with me. Um, we'll get to treasures in heaven, but I'm establishing a few things here. Um, let's see, John chapter 10, verse 22. And it was at Jerusalem, the Feast of the Dedication, and it was winter. What is the Feast of the Dedication in the winter? Well, today it's commonly known as Hanukkah. So, here it is. Nowhere in the Bible does it say uh, to celebrate Hanukkah. Uh, the, you know, the you know who's made it up. Verse 23, And Jesus walked in the uh, temple in Solomon's porch. Then came the Jews round about him and said unto him, How long dost thou make us to doubt? If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. So they surrounded Jesus and they say, Hey, dude, uh, if, if you're the Christ, uh, you know, don't be beating around the bush, right? Verse 25, and Jesus answered them, and, and Jesus answered them, I told you, and ye believe not. The works, the miracles, the works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. 
I mean, after all, he had raised the dead, given sight to the blind, made the lame to walk, healed the lepers. I mean, nobody. I mean, there's been times when people have done maybe a miracle here and there, but nobody had done all the miracles that Jesus had done. I mean, he healed more people than all the Old Testament prophets combined. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. But ye believe not, because ye are not of my sheep, as I said unto you. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. Oh yeah, his sheep hear his voice. And I give unto them, give, not earn, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. I and my Father are one. Jesus says, I and my Father are one. Then the Jews took up stones again to stone him. Jesus answered them, Many good works have I showed you for my Father. For which of those works do ye stone me? Verse 33, The you-know-whos answered him, saying, For a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Because that thou being a man, makest thyself God. Wow. Oh, they absolutely understood what Jesus was saying here. Absolutely. And you'll have modern day uh, so-called preachers will try to tell you that Jesus never claimed to be God. Well, they're full of the devil. What can I tell you? So let's go back to Matthew 19, verse 17. So here it is, this guy comes, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? And he said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. So I, my opinion is he's asking him, are you acknowledging that I'm God and that I have authority to forgive sins and grant eternal life? That's what I think. Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. I mean, if you have faith, you're not going to kill your neighbor. You're not going to cheat on his wife, your wife with the neighbor's wife. You're not going to steal his goods and his gold and silver or whatever. You know, you'll honor your father and mother and all that other good stuff, right? But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. He saith unto him, which? Hey, Jesus, which ones? Jesus said, Thou shalt do no murder. Thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Thou shalt not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. Hey, uh, the Seventh-day Adventist will tell you, uh, The Bible's wrong. He forgot. He, he left out the, the, the keeping the Sabbath. Well, Jesus said, the Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. There's absolutely nothing wrong with taking a day off and reflecting upon the things of the Lord. Absolutely nothing wrong at all. But when they try to make, a, make it a requirement of salvation, well, then you got a problem. Well, they have a problem, but, but uh, yeah. 
Honor thy father and thy mother, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. The young man saith unto him, All these things have I kept from my youth up. What lack I yet? Hey, Jesus, I've, I've done all these things, but am I lacking anything? Jesus said unto him, If thou wilt be perfect, go and sell that thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven. Treasure in heaven. And come and follow me. But when the young man heard that saying, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. He owned a lot of stuff. Yeah. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, Verily I say unto you, that a rich man shall hardly enter into the kingdom of heaven. Why is that? Because they love their riches more than they love the Lord. Period. And again I say unto you, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter in the, into the kingdom of God. When his disciples heard it, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. Then answered Peter and said unto him, Behold, we have forsaken all and followed thee. What shall we have therefore? And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, in the resurrection, and the new bodies, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory, ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging everybody in the whole world that uh, accepted Jesus? No. No. Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel, not the whole world. Did you know New Jerusalem has twelve gates? One for each tribe. There is no thirteenth gate for the Gentiles, the non-Israel. It doesn't exist. Tell Somebody tell the demon nominational preachers because they, they there's a 13th gate with them 29 and everyone that hath forsaken houses or brethren or sisters or father or mother or wife or children or lands for my name's sake shall receive an hundredfold and shall inherit everlasting life Hmm. But many that are first shall be last, and the last shall be first. Do you know that they tell you that when Jesus said, it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God? They, say, they tell you that there's a gate in Jerusalem called the eye of the needle, and when you're on your camel... You got to bend down a little bit so that you can, you know, it, it's it's not that tall. So when you're on a camel, you got to bend down just a little bit so that you can take that camel through the eye of the needle so you can make it into heaven. But I don't believe that. I think Jesus is talking about taking an actual needle and trying to thread a camel through it. And we ain't talking about a pack of cigarettes. Camel non-filters. Oh, yeah. Turkish tobacco. Yeah, that goes back a few years, so. All right, let's see. Let's go to Luke 18. Luke 18. 
I think we ought to read uh, from verse 1. Nobody ever spake like Christ. Nobody. And he spake a parable unto them to this end, that men ought always to pray and not to faint, saying, There was in a city a judge, which feared not God, nor regarded men. And there was a widow in that city, and she came unto him, saying, Avenge me of mine adversary. And he would not for a while, but afterward he said within himself, Though I fear not God, nor regard men, yet because this widow troubleth me, I will avenge her, lest by her continual coming she weary me. And the Lord said, Hear what the unjust judge said, saith, Shall not God avenge his own elect, which cry day and night unto him, though he bear long with them? I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. There's going to come a day when Christ is going to avenge his people, and it's going to happen fast. Might take a while, but it's going to happen. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man cometh, shall he find faith on the earth? Boy, I'll tell you what, that's a good question. And he spake this parable unto certain which trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. Two men went up into the temple to pray, the one a Pharisee, and the other a publican. Today that would be an IRS tax collector. That's the modern translation. The Pharisee stood and prayed thus with himself, God, I thank thee that I am not as other men are, extortioners, unjust, adulterers, or even as this publican. I fast twice in the week. I give tithes of all that I possess. See, eternal life is grace with mercy. It is the gift of God. But the Pharisee thinks, oh, I'm not like all these other people. And I fast, and I give tithes, and I keep all the commandments. Hmm. Verse 13. And the publican standing afar off, would not so much as lift his eyes unto heaven, but smote upon his breast, saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. That is, that is what God wants us to acknowledge. God, be merciful to me, a sinner. I tell you, this man went down to his house justified, rather than the other, for everyone that exalteth himself shall be abased. He'll be brought down. And he that humbleth himself shall be exalted. And they brought unto him also infants, that he should touch them. But when his disciples saw it, they rebuked them. Hey, my master's too busy for these little children. Get out of here. But Jesus called them unto him and said, Suffer, or allow, suffer little children to come unto me, and forbid them not. For as such is the kingdom of God. Verily I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, shall in no wise enter therein. You know, when there's a little child, they have to learn to trust and depend on their parents for everything, for clothes, to keep them warm in the winter, and, and to feed them, and take care of them, and, you know, and that's what the Lord wants us to do, to be like little children when it comes to Him. To lean upon Him and not our own understanding. And when it comes to this, I'm a hypocrite. I admit it. I need to look in the mirror and say, you're a hypocrite. Because every time I do something, that I think I've figured it all out, uh, it ends up wrong. I think the Lord does that just to show me how 
Little my stupid human brain is. Yeah. Whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child shall no wise enter therein. Here's the second witness of that event. Verse 18. And a certain ruler asked him, saying, Good master, what shall I do? What shall I do to inherit eternal life? Jesus saith unto, uh, said unto him, Why callest thou me good? None is good save one, that is God. Um, now, I don't know if this is the same event or a different person. I don't know. Verse 20, Jesus says, Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Honor thy father and thy mother. And he said, All these have, have I kept from my youth up. Now when Jesus heard these things, he said unto him, Yet lackest thou one thing, sell all that thou hast, and distribute unto the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. And when he heard this, he was very sorrowful, for he was very rich. When Jesus saw that he was very sorrowful, he said, How hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God? For it is easier for a camel to go through a needle's eye than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. And they that heard it said, Who then can be saved? And he said, The things which are impossible with men are possible with God. And Peter said, Lo, we have left all and followed thee. And he, Jesus, said unto them, Verily I say unto you that there is no man that hath left house or parents or brethren or wife or children for the kingdom of God's sake, who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting. Wow. All right, let's take a look. at the book of Mark, chapter 10. And by the way, that was Luke 18. Yeah, that was Luke 18 we just read. Mark 10. All right, we're going to Mark 10, 17. Yeah, it looks like it's the same story. And when he was gone forth into the way, Jesus, there came one running and kneeled to him and asked him, Good master, what shall I do that I may inherit eternal life? And Jesus said unto him, Why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. Thou knowest the commandments. Do not commit adultery. Do not kill. Do not steal. Do not bear false witness. Defraud not. Honor thy mother and father, thy father and mother. And he answered and said unto him, Master, all these have I observed from my youth. Then Jesus, beholding him, loved him, and said unto him, One thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come, take up the cross. Ooh, boy, I'll tell you what, there's a lot of people that hate that word cross. Jehovah's Witnesses are one of them. There's a certain religious group over in the Middle East that also hate the cross. Oh yeah, absolutely. And come take up the cross and follow me. And he was sad at that saying and went away grieved for he had great possessions. And Jesus looked round about and saith unto his disciples, how hardly shall they that have riches enter into the kingdom of God why? Because they love riches more than they love God. It's as simple as that. And the disciples were astonished at his words, but Jesus answereth again and saith unto them, Children, how hard is it for them that trust in riches? How hard is it for them that trust in riches to enter into the kingdom of God? Do we trust God or do we trust in 
the things that we have. Verse 25. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter into the kingdom of God. I think we got the idea, right? Yeah. So, I read a uh, something the other week or so, about a week or two ago, within a week, couple weeks I've read something where people were trying to tell us that uh, Jesus was the first communist. Yeah, sell all your possessions and uh, give to the poor. And they were saying, oh yeah, communism is like Jesus, or Jesus is like a communist. But uh, the difference being is uh, Jesus didn't send an army, soldiers with guns, to steal everything you had to give to the state. And then everybody went hungry. It didn't work like that. Because uh, that's, that's what they want you to think. And uh, the uh, church under communism was slaughtered. Millions were slaughtered under communism. And I'm thinking about doing a, a uh, study on communism. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. A lot of people don't know it, but communism didn't die. They just uh, changed their names and pretended to lay down for a little while. They just changed their names and now they call themselves Democrats. Yeah. So. All right, let's take a look at Matthew 13. We're going to take a look at this one. Let's take a look at uh, verse 44, Matthew 13, 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure, treasure hid in a field. The which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. Hmm. So the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hid in a field. And then a, a man, when he finds it, he hides the hides it. And for joy, goes and sells all that he has and buys that field. Who is this man? I believe it's Jesus Christ. Remember he used to call himself the Son of Man? And what do you mean he sold all that he had? Didn't he give his life and shed his blood? So that we might have eternal life. It says, and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. What's the field? Ah, oh, I'm glad you asked that question. Yeah, I just got a comment from a uh, guy uh, yesterday telling me that uh, I'm so wrong about uh, the sons of God in the Old Testament being angels. Yeah. Well, Matthew 13 and verse 24. Uh, this is nonsense. If you think the sons of God in Genesis 6 that married women and had giants for kids, then Jesus talking in Matthew 13 is nonsense. Verse 24. Another parable put he forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed. Do you know what the word seed is in the Greek New Testament? Sperma. S-P-E-R-M-A. 
Yeah, where have I heard that word before? Oh, wait, that's what the man donates uh, to a woman so that she can give birth to a child. That's what the word seed means in the Greek, sperma. You know, when you used to go to university, you would learn Greek and Latin. Yeah, and you would learn all the word roots. But um, in the early 60s, they had to get rid of all those requirements because the uh, so-called minorities couldn't, they couldn't cut it. I mean, it used to be you had to take a test and pass it to even be admitted to a university. And they get rid of that now. They don't, they don't need to do that now because certain groups of people just can't pass those kind of things. I'll tell you what, look at a ninth grade uh, graduation test from 100 years ago. Yeah, ask, I was like looking at it and I got, I went to college for two years, uh, com, uh, secular college. And they were asking, what is a participle? Use a participle in this. And what is a past participle and a present participle? And I'm like, what the, man, let me tell you something. Uh, they they tell us that, oh, we're so much smarter than they were 100 years ago. I'm not so sure about that. But, yeah. All right, so... Uh, the kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed, children, in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares weeds among the wheat and went his way. Now, people, I've got a playlist on the wheat and the tares where I go into this and tear it apart with uh, kudos to Pastor Dan of the Church of uh, Israel because he did a bang up job. And I admit it, I stole some of his information. So, but I got a playlist on uh, the wheat and the tares. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares, weeds among the wheat, and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? He said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest. And in the time of the harvest, I will say to the reapers, Gather ye together first the tares. Gather ye together first the tares. First gather the tares. And bind them in bundles to burn them. You know, that verse right there destroys the pre-trib rapture. That one verse in and of itself destroys the pre-trib rapture lie. Gather ye together first the tares, and bind them in bundles to burn them, but gather the wheat into my barn. Bingo. All right, let's go down to verse 36. Then Jesus sent the multitude away and went into the house, and his disciples came unto him, saying, Declare unto us the parable of the tares of the field. Hey, Jesus, can you explain this to us? We don't get it. Okay, 37. He answered and said unto them, He that soweth the good seed is the Son of Man, Christ. The field is the world. Oh, the field is the world. Oh, wait a minute. Let's, let's go back a minute here. Uh, da, 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 da. 
Verse 44, again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure hid in a field. Though which when a man hath found, he hideth and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath and buyeth that field. Does that make sense now? The field is the world. What is the treasure hid in the field? Israel. Who is the man that hath found, he hideth and for joy selleth, goeth and selleth all that he had? That was Christ. He went and gave his all, his life, and sold all that he had and bought that field because he wanted to tr save the treasure in the field. Does that make sense now? Let's go back. 37. He that soweth the good seed is the son of man. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom. But the tares are the children of the wicked one. Uh, who's the wicked one? Do you know there's people that will tell you the wicked one is Adam? I don't think so. I don't think so. Uh, if they are talking about Adam and Cain and Abel, think about it, people. Is Adam the wicked one? Hmm, I don't know. Some people tell you he is. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. The enemy that sowed them is the devil. The harvest is the end of the world, and the reapers are the angels. As therefore the tares are gathered and burned in the fire, so shall it be in the end of this world. The Son of Man shall send forth his angels. There's the man that, that sold all he had for the the, the buy you know for buy the treasure in the the field the son of man shall send forth his angels and they shall gather out of his kingdom all things that offend and them which do iniquity iniquity is wickedness and shall cast them into a furnace of fire there shall be wailing and gnashing of teeth then shall the righteous shine forth as the sun in the kingdom of their father, who hath ears to hear, let him hear. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like unto treasure, hid in a field, though which when a man hath found, he hideth, and for joy thereof goeth and selleth all that he hath, and buyeth that field. In Matthew 12, 35, Jesus says, A good man out of the good treasure, good treasure of the heart, bringeth forth good things, and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. Hmm. Oh yeah. How about Luke 12? 32. Jesus said, fear not, little flock. Uh, he didn't say, fear not, whole world. He said, fear not, little flock. For it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And every kingdom has a king. And every kingdom has laws. Verse 33. Jesus said, sell that ye have and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old, a treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither doth moth corrupteth. See, our treasures in heaven, they're not, there's not going to be a thief that's going to go in, break into your house and steal your treasures in heaven. And your wool clothing you, you're not going to have to worry about moths eating your robe, white robe of righteousness that Christ is going to give to his children that's washed in his blood. Verse 34. 
For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Is your heart on the world and money? Or is your heart on the Lord? Good question. How about Luke 6, 24? Jesus says, No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to the one and despise the other. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. And mammon is just basically money and riches and possessions. And I tell you, I, I have met some rich people that they just, oh, they wouldn't even give somebody working for them a glass of cold water in the Florida sun in the summer on a hot day. Wouldn't even do it. I've experienced it firsthand. I was working in Palm Beach where all the rich people are on the island installing their cable TV and asked for a glass of water in the summer. And they told me, oh, well, my maid doesn't come until two days from now. So use the hose outside. I'm like, really? You're, you're afraid my uh, dirty lips will touch your glass? It'll sit in your sink for a day before your maid comes to clean? Really? So I got to drink hot water out of your hose? Uh, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thank you very much. All right, let's go to Matthew 6. Jesus speaking. Verse 1. Take heed that you do not your alms before men. What is an alms? Uh, it's basically giving charity. You know, you see a guy, um, I can think back when, um, uh, I first came to the Lord, there was a guy that didn't have his legs and he would sit in front of the grocery store at, oh, the last week of the month. And I'm guessing probably his social security, probably his disability probably ran out. Uh, and he would just sit there. He wouldn't ask for money. He would just sit there. And, uh, we used to give him money and stuff. And I, I used to feel bad for him. I didn't talk to him much, but I'm guessing he probably was a, uh, he might've been a soldier or something in Vietnam. Who knows? But, uh, you know, it's shameful that, um, Somebody from a foreign country can come here. Government will give them a lot of money and a place to live and all kinds of medical care. And then somebody that served in the military they uh, or on disability, they give them almost nothing. I've seen that so many times. But, but that's what alms is. You know, if you flip the guy a $20 bill and you know, that would be alms. But Jesus said, Take heed that you do not do your alms before men, to be seen of them. Otherwise, ye have no reward of your Father which is in heaven. Therefore, when thou doest thine alms, do not sound a trumpet before thee, as the hypocrites do in their synagogues. Hmm... Yeah, you know, they stand on the corner and blow the trumpet. Doo, 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 doo. Hey, look, I'm giving this guy a coin. You know, look, everybody, see? Uh, Jesus says, don't do that. Do not sound a trumpet before thee as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets that they may have glory of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou doest alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, that thine alms may be in secret, and thy father, which seeth in secret, himself shall reward thee openly. 
And when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are, for they love to stand, uh, they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But when thou prayest, enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut thy door, pray to thy father which is in secret, and thy father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. But when ye pray, use not vain repetitions, as the heathen do. Uh, how many times can you say the rosary? Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. Hail Mary, full of grace. Uh, but when ye pray, use not vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they shall be heard of their much speaking. All right, let's take a look at the book of Mark, chapter 9, verse 38. And John answered him, saying, Master, we saw one casting out devils in thy name, and he followeth not us, and we forbid him because he followeth uh, not us. Wow, somebody's casting out devils in the name of Jesus. There's power in that name of Jesus. There's a reason why they want you to use Yeshua, because they know there's power in the name of Jesus. They know it. Oh, yeah. But Jesus said, Forbid him not, for there is no man which shall do a miracle in my name that can speak, that can lightly speak evil of me. That's right. For he that is not against us is on our part. Hey, if he's not against us, he's with us, right? Verse 41. For whosoever shall give you a cup of water to drink in my name, because ye belong to Christ, verily I say unto you, he shall not lose his reward. I don't think that person in Palm Beach is going to get their reward. but And whosoever shall offend one of these little ones that believe in me, it is better for him that a millstone were hanged about his neck and he were cast into the sea. As I understand it, a millstone weighs about 70 pounds or about 30 kilos. Can you imagine having that chained to your neck and then being thrown into the ocean? I don't think you could swim for very long. Maybe a little while. But you'd be better off. Because you'd only die once. Because you offend one of these little ones? Oh boy. You're going to be swimming in the sea, all right. The lake of fire, that's where you're going to be swimming. Oh, let's take a look at Colossians. Here's Paul again. And people will tell you Paul doesn't belong in the Bible. He's a false apostle. Well, they're a bunch of idiots. Don't listen to them. Colossians 3 and verse 12. Put on, therefore... As the elect of God. Do you know what elect means? Do you know that every four years we have an election? I, I don't think it matters, but uh, uh, nowadays uh, politicians are selected. They're not elected. They might make you think your vote counts, but uh, like Stalin said, it's not the vote that counts. It's, it's who counts the votes. That matters. Yeah. I don't think elections mean anything anymore. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God. See, God makes a choice. Yeah. We're the elect of God. God picks. And Esau's not going to be in there. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, Bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering, forbearing one another, and forgiving one another. 
If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. And above all these things, put on charity. Um, that's basically alms, people. Put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Spiritual songs. I don't think uh, we're supposed to be singing uh, Highway to Hell with ACDC, but hey, that's just me. Uh, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And whatsoever ye do in deed, I'm sorry, in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Oh boy, here's something I didn't get to read very often at weddings. Verse 18, Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as it is fit in the Lord. You know, ladies, it's very important you pick the right guy. Yeah. And guys, look at this, 19. Husbands, love your wives and be not bitter against them. Do you know we're supposed to, uh, there's another verse of Paul that says, Husbands, love your wives even as Christ loved the church. What did Christ do for the church? He gave his life for the church. Do you know husbands are supposed to give their uh, lives to protect their wives and fam families? Did you know that? should but uh satan has so destroyed the family today uh, it's just unbelievable so husbands love your wives and be not bitter against them children obey your parents in all things for this is well pleasing unto the lord fathers provoke not your children to anger lest they be discouraged Servants, obey in all things your masters according to the flesh, not with eye service as men pleasers, but in singleness of heart, fearing God. Because why? God made a servant and made the master. You know, God made me to be born of my parents and my children to be born of me. God picked it, not me. I didn't pick it and say, oh, okay, I want a couple of girls, and then a boy, and then another girl, and then another boy. No. If you have a boy or a girl, it's because the Lord decided that's what he wanted. So, verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord, and not unto men. Knowing that of the Lord... Ye shall receive the reward, the gift, the gift of God, right? Knowing that of the Lord, ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance, for ye serve the Lord Christ. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect to persons. God doesn't care how many millions you got in the bank. He don't care. Believe me, he do. He does not care. He doesn't have any respect for that. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. And seeing the multitudes, he went up into a mountain. And when he was set, his disciples came unto him. And he opened his mouth and taught them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. This is Jesus speaking. Blessed are they that mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness, 
for they shall be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. You know, one of the, Jesus said that if we didn't forgive, that God the Father wouldn't forgive us. Yeah. Forgiveness is so, such an important thing. I mean, I, I cannot stress it enough. I did an entire Bible study on forgiveness. And believe me, I struggle with it. I've lost everything I had about probably two or three times. One time, supposedly by a Christian brother. And I'm supposed to forgive him for stealing almost everything I have. Yeah. Almost everything I had. But I'm supposed to forgive. Verse 7. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Well, that excludes me. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the children of God. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake. Boy, I tell that to the pre trib rapture crowd. Huh. Blessed are they which are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceeding glad, for great is your reward in heaven. Treasures in heaven, people! For great is your reward in heaven, for so persecuted they the prophets which were before you. You know, almost all the prophets died uh, while well, they were killed. Because people, when they don't like the message, they kill the messenger. Yeah. Yeah, they sure do. A lot of the prophets died for giving the message. In Luke chapter 6 and verse 20, And he, Jesus, lifted up his eyes on his disciples and said, Blessed be ye poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are ye that hunger now, for ye shall be filled. Blessed are ye that weep now, for ye shall laugh. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you, and when they shall separate you from their company, and shall reproach you, and cast out your name as evil, for the Son of Man's sake. You know, people, when you hang out with the world, drinking, drugging, chasing guys or girls, whatever the case may be and you come to the Lord and you quit doing those things people will you won't have to separate from them they'll separate from you boy when I started talking to my drinking buddies about Jesus they're like oh man this Bob guy uh, it's, uh, he's got religion I don't want to hear this crap hey let's go to the bar hey I got a joint right here Hey, look at that hot girl. Man, I'd like to, you know, you get the idea. Yeah. They'll leave you. You won't have to leave them. Yeah, that Bob guy, he got religion. Now he thinks he's too good to hang out with us. Yeah. Blessed are ye when men shall hate you and when they shall separate you from their company and shall reproach you and cast out your name as evil. For the Son of Man's sake, rejoice ye in that day. Rejoice ye in that day and leap for joy. For behold, your reward, your treasure, your reward is great in heaven. For in the like manner did their fathers unto the prophets. But woe unto you that are rich. For ye have received your consolation. Oh yeah. Hey, rich people, you wanted wealth and the things of this world? 
God gave you what you wanted. You've received your consolation. Woe unto you that are full, for ye shall hunger. Woe unto you that laugh now, for ye shall mourn and weep. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you. For so did their fathers to the false prophets. Every time I read that, I think of Billy Goat Graham. Didn't the world, the world loved Billy Graham, didn't they? They did. They spoke very well of him. He was invited to the White House. Chaplain Bob's never been invited to the White House. Because if I was, I'd be, well, let's just say the Secret Service would probably tackle me and kick me out. Yeah. Woe unto you when all men shall speak well of you, for so did their fathers to the false prophets. But I say unto you which hear, love your enemies. Don't love God's enemies. Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Why? Because maybe one day your enemy might be your friend and he might come to the Lord. Think about it. Love your enemies. Do good to them which hate you. Bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. You know, I found out when I was a rotten little kid, there was a mother that was a believer that uh, was praying for me. I don't know how often, but when I came to the Lord, I gave her a call and talked to her and she says, Bob, I've been praying for you. I was like, wow. I'm looking forward to meeting her one day in the kingdom. I didn't know that. She was a nice lady too. She, I was friends with her kids. So, bless, bless them that curse you and pray for them which despitefully use you. And unto them that smiteth thee on the one cheek, offer also the other. And him that taketh away thy cloak, forbid not to take thy coat also. Give to every man that asketh of thee. And of him that taketh away thy goods, ask them not again. You know, when you see these people on the street corners, you know, asking for money, it's hard to say no. It really is, even though they're probably going to buy beer, or drugs, whatever. So, And as ye would that men should do to you, do ye also to them likewise. Treasure in heaven, people. Take a look at this. Psalms, chapter 135, verse 1. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the name of the Lord. Praise him, O ye servants of the Lord. Ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of the house of our God. Praise the Lord, for the Lord is good. Sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself, and Israel for his peculiar treasure. Hmm. For the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself, and Israel for his peculiar treasure. And I know that the Lord is great and that our Lord is above all gods. I remember God changed Jacob's name to Israel. Oh, yeah. So Jacob and Israel are synonymous. In Exodus 19 and verse 5, God said, Now therefore, if... Ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, not the old covenant, the new covenant. That's what Passover was all about, the new covenant. Christ said, take, eat, this bread is my body, uh, drink this cup, this is the blood of the covenant, which is shed for many. Oh yeah, the Lord's Supper. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is 
mine, a peculiar treasure. In Isaiah 33 and verse 6, and wisdom and knowledge, wisdom and knowledge of the Lord, people, right? And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. Let's read that again. And wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of thy times, your lifetime, I think, and strength of salvation. The fear of the Lord is his treasure. In Matthew thirteen fifty two, Then said he, Jesus, unto them, Therefore every scribe which is instructed unto the kingdom of heaven is like unto a man that is an householder, which bringeth forth out of his treasure things new and old. So what is the treasure old and new? I think it's the covenants, the testaments, new and old testaments. But that's just my guess. Uh, let's take a look at Luke 12, verse 15. And he, Jesus, said unto them, Take heed and beware of covetousness. Uh, covetousness, greed. For a man's life consisteth not in the abundance of the things which he possesseth. And he spake a parable unto them, saying, The ground of a certain rich man brought forth plentifully. So evidently he had a, a big orchard, lots of fruit, right? And he thought within himself, saying, What shall I do? Because I have no room where to bestow my fruits. And he said, This will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. So he's got a barn, a warehouse, and it's full. And he's like, man, I've had such a bumper crop this year. I haven't even eaten the stuff from last year. So I'm going to have to pull down my barns and build a bigger one. He's got so much food and stuff, he doesn't even know what to do with it all. And he said, this will I do. I will pull down my barns and build greater. And there will I bestow all my fruits and my goods. And I will say to my soul, Soul, thou hast much goods laid up for many years. Take thine ease, take it easy, eat, drink, and be merry. Have you ever heard that before? Eat, drink, and be merry. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be, re be required of thee. Then whose shall those things be which thou hast provided? You got a barn full of food and you're not going to share your bumper crop from this year with people that have nothing? Really? Well, when I kill you, the Lord says, who's is all this stuff going to belong to? Then who shall those things be which thou hast provided? Verse 21. So is he that layeth up treasure for himself, treasure on earth, and is not rich toward God. That's right. Should be given to the poor, helping out those that are less fortunate than us. We need to be rich toward God. And he said unto his disciples, verse 22, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, neither for the body, what ye shall put on. The life is more than meat, and the body is more than raiment, clothing. Consider the ravens, for they, never, for they neither sow nor reap, which neither have storehouse nor barn, and God feedeth them. How much more are ye better than the fowls? And which of you, 
with taking thought can add to his stature one cubit. You think you can think and make yourself taller? And if ye then be not able to do that thing which is least, why take ye thought for the rest? You know, people, I think when the tribulation happens and people are going to get their heads cut off for uh, not denying Christ and not taking the mark of the beast and they flee into the wilderness, Revelation 12, I truly believe the Lord's going to provide manna from heaven just like he did in the book of Exodus. But we'll see. God will provide. Verse 27. Consider the lilies how they grow. They toil not, they spin not. And yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. If then God so clothed the grass, which is today in the field, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not ye that which ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, neither be ye of doubtful mind. For all these things do the nations of the world seek after, and your Father knoweth what ye have need of these things. But rather seek ye the kingdom of God. Seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell that ye have, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which wax not old. A treasure in the heavens that faileth not, where no thief approacheth, neither moth corrupteth. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Wow. Let's take a look at James chapter 5. We're getting ready to close out this thing. James chapter 5. Go now. Go to now, ye rich men, weep and howl for your miseries that shall come upon you. Your riches are corrupted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver is cankered and the rust of them shall be a witness against you and shall eat your flesh as it were fire. Ye have heaped treasure together for the last days. Wow. Behold, the hire of the laborers who have reaped down your fields, which, which is of you kept back by fraud, and the cries of them which have reaped are entered into the ears of the Lord of Sabaoth. See, these rich people, they're very wealthy. They hired these people the people reaped down their fields. They worked in the fields and gathered all the stuff. But when it came time for payday, they didn't pay them. Oh, uh, you know, I mean, there's actually a group of religious people who think it's a sin to pay people. Uh, you ought to look at the uh, little... Look this up. Spell him. K O L, one word. Second word is N I D R E. That's the second word. Look that up. K O L N I D R E. Yeah. They actually make a, uh, they make a vow to God that they're not going to keep their promises. Oh, yeah, you go reap my field. I'm going to pay you, I promise. No, I'm not. It's the equivalent of crossing your fingers behind your back when you were a kid and, you know, made a promise. Uh -huh, uh huh. I had my fingers crossed. You got both hands behind your back with fingers, both fingers crossed. That's what you call the double cross, right? Yeah, you double cross your friends. These people worked in their fields in the heat of the day, and when it came time to get paid... The rich people wouldn't pay them. 
but they were crying because they couldn't feed their wife and child or children. But this, because this rich pe person thought, oh, I don't want to give them my money. And the judge, he's a, he's a personal friend of mine. I give him money every year for his uh, re-election campaign. So I know they're not going to win in court if they take me. Yeah, but are you going to be able to escape the judge of all flesh, the Lord of Bat Sabaoth? Yeah, verse 5. Jew, James says to the rich people, Ye have lived in pleasure on the earth and been wanton. They've lacked nothing. Ye have nourished your hearts as in a day of slaughter. Ye have condemned and killed the just, and he doth not resist you. Be patient, therefore, brethren, Unto the coming of the Lord, behold, the husbandman waiteth for the precious fruit of the earth and hath long patience for it until he receive the early and the latter rain. Be ye also patient, establish your hearts, for the coming of the Lord draweth nigh. Oh yeah, watch out for those rich people, boy. All right, let's read Revelation chapter 22. And we're going to close out this study. This is what awaits those who are given grace and eternal life, the gift of God from faith, with faith. Revelation 22, verse 1. And he showed me a pure river of water of life. Water of life. Clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. And in the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manners of fruits. Twelve manner of fruits. How many tribes of Israel are there? Twelve. There's not a thirteenth tree, uh, well, thirteenth fruit for the Gentiles. No. Was there the tree of life which bare twelve manner of fruits and yielded her fruit every month? Twelve months, one fruit for every month. And the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. What nations? The nations of Israel. Verse 3, And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and the Lamb shall be in it, and its servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face. And his name shall be in their foreheads. Now, think about it. The mark of the beast. It'll either be in your right hand or in the forehead. You want the mark of the beast in your forehead or do you want the name of God in your forehead? Uh, boy, that's a tough choice, huh? Verse 5. And there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, light of the world, and they shall reign forever and ever. Reign as in ruling and reigning, not water falling from the sky, right? And he said unto me, These sayings are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophets, not the false prophets, not the Jehovah's Witnesses, not the Mormons, these sayings are faithful and true, and the Lord God of the holy prophets sent his angel to show unto his servants the things which must shortly be done. Jesus speaking here, verse 7, Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of the prophecy of this book. Is it the entire Bible or just the book of Revelation? Your choice. Verse 8. And I, John, saw these things and heard them. And when I heard and seen, I fell down to worship before the feet of the angel, which showed me these things. Then saith he unto me, See thou do it not. You know, John was fell before the feet of the angel. And the angel says, See thou do it not. 
Uh, what are you doing? Get up. You know, that's, yeah. See thou do it not, for I am thy fellow servant, and of thy brethren the prophets, and of them which keep, and of them which keep the sayings of this book. Worship God. And he saith unto me, Seal not the sayings of the prophecy of this book, for the time is at hand. He that is unjust, let him be unjust still. And he which is filthy, let him be filthy still. And he that is righteous, let him be righteous still. And he that is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I come quickly. This is Jesus speaking now, verse 12. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward, and my reward is with me. So behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me to give every man according as his work shall be. See, you don't earn eternal life from your works, but your reward, your treasures in heaven do. At least that's my take on it. Verse 13. I am, Jesus speaking here, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Well, God created the beginning of the world and God is going to make the new world. He's going to end the old world. He's the first Adam. He created Adam and he's called the last Adam. I am. Remember when Moses was at the burning bush and he asked, uh, well, I think it was the burning bush, but Moses had asked, hey, uh, Lord, uh, they're going to ask me your name. And what am I going to tell them? What is your name? You know, what's, what's, what's your name, God? Because Egypt had a, a bunch of gods. I mean, a bunch of them. And the Lord replied, he says, I am. Tell them I am has sent you. I am that I am. And Jesus even said when the Jews asked him, uh, you know, Jesus said that Abraham rejoiced to see his day. And they said, you're not yet 50 years old. And you've seen Abraham? Jesus said, before Abraham was, I am. They understood, the Jews understood what Jesus was saying. He was identifying himself as the I am of Moses. Yeah. And in verse 13, he says, I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do his commandments, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into, into the city. Oh, yeah. And uh, what city is that? Oh, I know, I know. The New Jerusalem. Yeah. Verse 15, for without our dogs... Do you know what dogs are called in the Old Testament? Um, men that enjoy being with other men are likened unto... Yeah, you get the idea. Well, I don't believe you, Chaplain Bob. Well, let's take a look at Deuteronomy chapter 23, verse 17. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. All right. There shall be no whore of the daughters of Israel, nor a sodomite of the sons of Israel. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog. This is parallelism. Thou shalt not bring the hire of a whore or the price of a dog into the house of the Lord thy God for any vow, for even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. 
you got a whore, a prostitute that wants to uh, tithe and bring money into the house of God. Uh, God doesn't want your money. No. Uh-uh. You don't want it. For even both these are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Boy, you don't hear that anymore, huh? Revelation 22, 15. For without are dogs and saucers and whoremongers. Oh boy, that was me for a while. Whoremonger. And murderers and idolaters and whosoever loveth and maketh a lie. Verse 16. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am, I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright and morning star. And if you look at uh, the NIV Bible and the complete Jewish Bible, guess what? You know who the morning star is in Isaiah 14? The guy that fell from heaven that the King James calls Lucifer. Yeah, the NIV Bible and the complete Jewish Messianic so-called Bible removes the name Lucifer, that everybody knows who Lucifer is. You can go to a Satanist or a Luciferian and ask them who Lucifer is. They know who that is. And they remove Lucifer and they insert Morningstar, thus making Jesus the one that fell from heaven, that's going down to the pit of hell. To be covered with worms. Yeah. So who fell from heaven? Christ? Or Lucifer? Well, Lucifer doesn't belong in the Bible because it's a Latin word. That's their argument. But if you look, English is composed of approximately 20% Latin words. Which is why when you went to university 100 years ago, they taught you Latin. And they taught you Greek. But they don't do that anymore. They don't want you to be educated. They want you to know pronouns. Yeah. I, Jesus, have sent mine angel to testify unto you these things in the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright morning star. And the Spirit and the Bride say, Come, and let him that heareth say, Come, and let him that is a thirst come, and whosoever will, let him take the water of life freely. For I testify unto every man that heareth the words of the prophecy of this book, If any man shall add unto these things, God shall add unto him the plagues that are written in this book. You know, people, that's why I, uh, try, I don't stray far from the Bible. Because I don't want the plagues written in this book. 19. And if any man shall take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God shall take away his part out of the book of life. God's going to take away his part out of the book of life. You ever heard Baptist preachers preaching, Oh, once you're saved, you're always saved. Eternal security. You know, once you say that little sinner's prayer, God God couldn't throw you in hell no matter how hard he wanted to. Doesn't matter what you do. You're saved forever. You're eternally secure. But that's not what I read here. If you take away from the words of the book of this prophecy, God will take away his part out of the book of life and out of the holy city and from the things which are written in this book. Wow. I, ew, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to test that eternal security, once saved, always saved, uh, demon nominational theory. But verse 20, he which testifieth these things saith, surely I come quickly. Amen. Even so come Lord Jesus. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. And that concludes this new Bible study, Treasures in Heaven. All blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' precious name. Amen.